you're very anti-Catholic. You're anti-me. It's so based on ignorance. That is actually a lie. I've seen your videos. They're not honest. Where have I lied on my videos? Do you think I hate Catholics? Yeah, Galileo. He was put in prison by the Catholic no, Church. Was. That's a false story. Uh, Ray Comfort gets owned by Catholic. This gentleman's name is Don, and he showed up at Huntington Beach here in California for the sole purpose of straightening me out when it came to my understanding of the Catholic Church. As he walked by me, he said, you are anti-Catholic, and that certainly got my attention. He kindly agreed to come on camera, and this is how our conversation began. He asked me, have I ever looked at a woman in lust? Have I ever lied? Have I ever cheated? All these stuff, and you say, ah, you've just said you're this. No, that doesn't define me. So what defines you? Morality is, it's, it's a definition of how you carry yourself, your ethics, what you believe in, your faith. Now, how did you start this conversation before we turn the camera on? Because <laughs> I think that's relevant. Well, I, I've seen your videos, and you're very anti-Catholic. So what do you have to do to enter heaven as a Catholic? Same thing that you guys believe you do. You have to recognize Jesus Christ is your own personal Savior. No one goes through heaven but through me. Yeah, so why are you so upset and saying I hate Catholics? That's all I well, tell them. Why wouldn't anybody? If, if, you, if you're anti-Catholic, you're anti-me, right? No, I'm not. Yeah. I love you very much. Well, I care about you. That's what you say. Yeah, what else can I do? I've seen your videos. They're not honest. Where have I lied on my videos? Okay, you made a statement to someone. When you think about Christianity, what do people think? And they say, well, it's the Crusades, it's the Inquisition, it's all these things that Christians done. You go, no, 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 no. That's the Catholic faith. Don't you know anything about that? You mean the Catholic Inquisition? The Inquisition. So I've studied it. No, you didn't. Okay, where did he get it wrong? There was well, no, there's no Inquisition. No, that's not what I'm saying. There was. Just visualize these monks from Monty Python, you know, one of those Monty Python videos. I've with not it. seen those. Oh, you should. They're kind of funny, though. Blasphemous. Oh. Why? They're blasphemous. Who cares if it's blasphemous, right? I it's do. The church, right? No, I care if it's oh, blasphemous. Okay. They're blaspheming in the name of Jesus. I don't want to watch it. Okay. So where are you going when you die? I'm going to heaven. Why? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure? I'm pretty sure. I don't want to say you're pretty sure. You want to know. That's the teaching of the Bible. I know I'm going to heaven. You know you're going to heaven. Yeah. So right. I just came back from confession earlier today, which I know you don't believe in, but you know. I believe in confession, but directly to God, like the scriptures teach, like... David confessed directly to God when he yeah, had said... Yeah, but Jesus also told disciples, you know, God sent me, so I sent you. You have the power to retain the sins. We both have the power to do that. We can forgive people or not yeah, forgive sure. them. sure. Actually, the church believes that too. So let me give my testimony and see what you think. Tell me where I'm wrong. The reason I came to Christ is because I knew I'd sinned against God. I felt I was going to heaven until I read the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. Whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. And I thought, man, if God's going to judge me by that standard on Judgment Day, I'm going to hell because I was burning with unlawful sexual desire like every red-blooded guy. And that's when I understood the cross, that we broke God's law, Jesus paid the fine, rose from the dead, defeated death, and all we have to do to find everlasting life is repent of our sins and put our faith in Jesus. That's what I tell Catholics who have never been born again. So you think... Catholics don't know that. I say, have you been born again? They say, no. I think, well, this is an unsaved person. I'm going to share the gospel with them. And that's what I get railed for by Catholics, by sharing well, the gospel. A lot of people, you know, when you approach them with a microphone, they think on the spot. They have to think on the spot. So they don't always say the right things, right? When it talks about lust, I mean, there has to be a context there, I think, because lust, isn't that like a mechanism for reproduction? No. Lust is unlawful sexual desire in what God's eyes. What is it unlawful? Violating God's law. You know the difference. When you look at pornography, that's lust. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. All right. We have a conscience, and conscience knows the difference. Some people say, oh, Jesus was talking about married women because he said you commit adultery in your heart when you look with lust. But that's crazy because that means every woman you want to lust after, you've got to go up to her and say, excuse me, are you married or not? Does that mean you can look at porn with a single woman, not married woman? No, Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, commit adultery with her in your heart. And every time we sin, we store up God's wrath. That's what the Bible teaches, Romans chapter 2. So we need to repent, put our trust in Jesus, and have our sins washed away. And evidence of that is that we'll love righteousness. And we'll have a knowledge of everlasting life because we've been born again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think I hate Catholics? Yeah, I, I think I still think you do. Because, because it's based on ignorance. It's because there's a lot of anti. There's a lot of churches that have been burned. 
because there's a lot of anti-Catholics going on. Same with Jews, same with Christians all over the world. So it's just a hatred for the things of God. So you may not realize this, but Don, I really love you. I care about you. My and, sweet. And, and, I, and I hope you'll think about what we talked about. And can I give you a book I've written called Scientific Facts in the no, Bible? I don't want it. Why not? Yeah. Let me show it to you. Just take a hold of it for a second. Won't hurt you. It's written in a New Zealand accent. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. A lot of people think that the Catholic Church was anti-science, but actually a lot of scientific principles that, were, that are used today was discovered by Catholic priests, such as early mathematics, psychiatry, Galileo. He was put in prison by the Catholic no, Church. That's a false story. Pope John Paul II rectified a wrong that forced the Italian astronomer and physicist to live the last years of his life in exile, and worse yet, to recant his proven discoveries to save his hide. Pope John Paul II concluded he had been imprudently opposed. The leader of the investigation conducted in 1992, Cardinal Paul Poppard, said, We today know that Galileo was right in adopting the Copernican astronomical theory, a statement that would have put him at risk of being arrested and possibly executed by his own church just a few hundred years previously. That is a false story. I've actually. seen Catholics apologizing for it, for what actually happened. I know. There's, you know, we got stupidity in every faith. So it did happen. Okay, Galileo was a teacher at Catholic universities. And he started teaching heliocentrism. What scientists believed at the time was uh, the Earth was the center of the universe. But he was teaching that the Sun was the center of the universe, which he was right, of course. I think it touches on, on Galileo, so you'll enjoy it. But he wasn't put in prison, though. His house arrest for what he well, believed. He wasn't tried for heresy. And he was basically saying, screw you guys, I'll teach what I want. And they got tired of it. So they had a hearing for him, an inquisition, okay? They didn't torture him. They didn't do to him what they did to William Tyndale. I don't know who he is. He, he translated the Bible into English and was burned at the stake by the Catholic Church for doing uh, that. That's probably... Ninety percent of the population during that time was ignorant. They didn't know how to read. So what did they have to fear? That's why it was translated into English for the common people. And that's how people came to Christ, because they read in the Bible that salvation is a free gift of God. It's not earned by works. It's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. If you're saved, you'll have evidence of your salvation. If you've got a fruit tree, it'll be a fruit. Fruit of righteousness that manifests once you're born again. And that's all I'm saying. Eternal life is a free gift of God. That's good news for atheists, for agnostics, for Catholics, for non-Catholics. There's this guy who's been, he has a YouTube channel and he wants to debate you. Oh, so terribly. Trent? Oh, him. Have you ever considered that? No, I'd never consider it. No, this is somebody else. I think he contacted your parish I don't have a parish. Or whatever you call it, I don't know. Your church headquarters or whatever. I don't whatever. have a church headquarters. I don't even have a church. I go to a church. Oh, you're just like uh, an I'm independent just like, agent, I'm just, huh? I'm just like you, Don. Okay. An ordinary person. Ray Comfort gets owned by Catholic. That's the only way I can think of it, so relax. <laughs> yeah, here he is. And he actually went over some of your videos here of you confronting people who are Catholic. And well, it's kind sharing of... the gospel with people who are Catholic, not confronting them. Okay. Okay, sure. That's him right there. Our friends over at Living Waters, Ray Comfort and gang are at it again, spreading lies about Catholicism. He's been saying, I've been trying to reach out to Ray Comfort and, you know, I can't get a hold of him. It's not going to happen. No, why not? Because it's like someone wanted to debate, wanting to debate that the sun's made of ice. I really haven't got time for that. I'd rather share the gospel with Catholics and non-Catholics because I care about them. He could tell you how it really is. I've watched his YouTube channel. I know what he says. Oh, do you? Oh, yes. I'm very familiar with him. We just did a video answering his accusations. Yeah. It's Ray Comfort sounds Catholic. He goes around not teaching people faith alone. He goes around teaching people that... If you break the commandments, you're going to be lost. And we agree, we have to follow the commandments even after you're saved. Jesus said it, Paul said it, everyone says it. That is just not true. I have never said that, and neither does the Bible. It says the opposite. 
The Ten Commandments can't save us. They weren't given for that purpose. We're saved by grace and grace alone, without works. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The Christian does good works not to obtain salvation, but as evidence of salvation, not bribery, but gratitude. Understanding this is the difference between life and death. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out. S salvation is for everybody, right? It, it, it transcends borders. Well, the offer is universal, and it's only those who are born again will enter God's kingdom according to Jesus. And so when I meet a Catholic who's not born again, I share the gospel with him because I love him and care about him and hope he thinks about him. And, you know, they're very grateful. No one's railed on me. They've said, thanks for talking to me. And I don't know. I've seen some videos. I, I've seen some people come down really hard on you, right? I have a good relationship with God, and I do believe that God does, does forgive us for our sins. And because I am Catholic, I do believe in confessing my sins and being forgiven. Have you been born again? I was born September 11th, 1971, and I was baptized a Catholic, and I have been Catholic my entire life. Okay. You have told lies, whether you have had sex outside of marriage, whether you are homosexual, it does not matter. God loves his children, period. You're blowing out of your and that is where that lands, plain and simple. Would you give me the courtesy of one minute, please? A whole minute? Yes. Mm. You cannot earn eternal life. The redemption of your soul is precious. No man can by any means redeem his brother. I am a Catholic and I am proud of it. But you know what? I'm not going to sit there and condemn anybody, nor am I going to shove the Bible down anybody's throat, especially if they're a good person. If they're a good human being, if they're a good human being, that is all God wants for our planet. Do unto others as you would have done to yourself. That's it. That is the golden rule. That is what God wants us to live by. You need to accept that, and so does the rest of the well, world. Thank you very much for talking to me. You're about. welcome. <laughs> well, you have videos on there that says, it shows a Catholic hollering and screaming. Oh, I that think. was a guy. <laughs> he was half drunk, and, and he was angry. Oh. He was angry at Catholicism. There's, there's we know there's the pedophile thing ring, and the, the Catholic Church. It sucks. It's annoying. I'm Catholic. It sucks too. Well, Just I'm not hearing about Catholic. that. It's it your sucks. problem. You go and talk to the Pope. He's your boss. Yeah. Yes. And look what happened. And he's still not doing anything. And he's letting it happen. He's letting it happen. What are you gonna do? He's letting it happen. What do you want me to do? Go, instead of preaching here, like, you know, hey, dude, everything's all good, tell them, yo, bro, fix the everything. They won't let me on the balcony. <laughs> but God can make you righteous because he's merciful and because of what Jesus did. Okay. Hang on a minute, but you must repent and trust alone in Jesus. Not your goodness, you don't have any. Trust alone in Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. But, well, one question. I know, it's a weird question. Is God black or, or white? God is a spirit. He's not got a body like a man. like it. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. There's a time when you, and I'm sure you remember this, you interviewed someone who was a witch who practices Wicca, yes. right? And she had like a, a collar on. So I'm Catholic. Okay. Have you been born again? I was saved my whole life, I was christened. I've never stopped being a Catholic. All I did was open up my mind to other religions and I learned that all religions have truth. You said you're a Catholic and that you've been saved all your life. And Jesus said, unless you're born again, you're not into the kingdom of heaven. Then I must have been born again because then I remembered who I was by God's grace and I was saved by St. Christopher, so I believe. I'm very repentant, of course, but of course God's issues and commands are different for saints than they are for people. No, the Bible says that we're The Bible was edited by William Shakespeare. I'm a New Age Christian. I read the agnostic books. I read the Dead Sea Scrolls. I read every book I could. I wanted to know the truth. Can I pray for you? Of course you can. Tell me your name again. Lady Catherine of Aragon. I'm yeah. a sister. I'm a nun. Okay. And today may she understand the love that you have for her soul. May she truly repent, be born again, and pass from death to life. Because of your mercy, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. She said she was, look, we don't condone Wicca. Yeah. Let's put that on the table right now. So if, if she practices Wicca, that means she left the church. But she still needed the gospel, and that's what I shared with her. Sure wouldn't hurt. Yeah. 
Sure. Especially someone like that. And you and me. Sure. We're like that too. Sure. Being eternal life is a free gift of God. Is that what you're saying? I, I didn't say free gift from God. I didn't say that. So how do you get to heaven? You have, we believe the same thing you do. You have to recognize no one goes to heaven except through Jesus Christ. You've got to repent and trust in Him. Exactly. And that's what I tell Catholics that I meet who aren't trusting And they should in know that. Now, I'm not saying every Catholic. I bumped into some Catholics that don't know. So he died for our sins, you know that. Right. How can that help you 2,000 years later? You're under God's wrath, heading for hell. How can the suffering death of Jesus help you 2,000 years later? I don't know. You tell me. If you can get a grip of this, Edward, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's why he said it is finished just before he died. He was saying paid in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines, a judge will let you go if someone pays them. Even though you're guilty, you see out of here, someone's paid your fine. And it's legal to let you go because someone paid your fine. Well, God can take the death sentence off you. He can legally let you live forever because Jesus paid the fine in full and then rose from the dead. And when are you going to repent and trust in Jesus alone for your salvation? Oh, I always do. No. This. I'm a full believer in my religion. Yeah. Catholic. yeah, I'm not talking about your religion. I'm talking about God's provided a, a way of salvation through trusting alone my in Jesus. My church provides that. Well, it hasn't told you what I've told you today. It left you in the dark how you're going to be saved. You didn't even know why Jesus died on the cross. Let me put it this way, and I hope this makes sense to you. At the moment, you're like a man on the edge of a plane 10,000 feet up. He knows he has to jump, and his plan is this. He's going to flap his arms and try and save himself. And you and I'd say to that guy, don't do that, that's not going to work, just trust the parachute. And at the moment, you're like that man, you think you're a good person. No, or I have a good parachute, I, I have a good parachute, it's called the Catholic Church, it's a very good parachute. Okay, well, I'm saying there's only one parachute and that's Jesus, don't he is the way, the truth and the life. So, did you get the analogy? Sure did, don't, I sure did. Okay, don't try and save yourself by saying I'm a good person, it's not going to work, just simply transfer your trust from yourself to the Savior. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yes, I do. May I give you a Gospel of John? It's a fourth book of the New Testament. Sure. And can I give you a book I've written called Scientific Facts in the Bible? Of course. It's called Save Yourselves of Pain, which is Principles of Christian Growth. Okay. Great to meet you, Edward. All right. Nice meeting you. Don, you've been very patient with me, and I hope you don't think I dislike you because I love you very much, and um, I wish you all the best, and I hope you think about what we talked about. Well, I always think about what I hear you talk about. You read the comments on YouTube? All the time. I'll send a few your way. <laughs> Do that. Nice to meet you, man. All right, Ray. Okay. Yeah. You're not as bad as I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> case after case of alleged sexual misconduct. Committed by Catholic priests and covered up by bishops. Hundreds of priests had sexually abused thousands of children over decades. The Catholic clergy in Portugal sexually abused nearly 5,000 children. And the total number of Illinois children known to have been abused by priests and other Catholic churchmen at almost 2,000. Hundreds of new allegations against Northern California priests, including some who still work here. And allegations of Florida children being sexually abused by Catholic priests. About 200,000 minors have been victims of predatory clergymen and others affiliated with the church. Uh, even raped as young as six, seven, eight years old. Credibly accused of sexual abuse. 42 names here in the Galveston, Houston Archdiocese, including Father John Keller. The St. John of God order of priests, the allegation is that 40% of them were accused of abuse. More than 150 Catholic priests and others are accused of abusing more than 600 children. More than 1,000 victims of more than 300 Roman Catholic priests. A website that tracks clergy abuse in all 50 states lists more than 5,000. Listen to that, 5,000 current or former priests who have been publicly accused. After a similar investigation in France revealed around 3,000 clergy members sexually abused over 200 thousand children. Living Waters exists as a non-profit ministry to help you grow in your faith. Here are three things to help you do just that. The Living Waters Podcast. 
the evidence study Bible, everything you've ever wanted to know about the Christian faith, and the starter kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks. These and much more are available at livingwaters.com. If you'd like to see someone who referred to himself as once being an annoying, hardcore atheist come to Christ to a point where you'll clap your hands with joy, you're going to love this video. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.